it's Eric from Primal Tone. Today we are going to cover how this guitar came to be. Um, it was a complete piece of crap. Now it's actually nice. Um, we're gonna take it from start to finish and you're going to get to see the whole process. See you in a few. Okay, what you see before you is a it's kind of a fake Fender Stratocaster, very filthy as you can see. It needs to be cleaned up really badly. Uh, we're going to remove all the uh, imitation stuff off the headstock, clean everything up, add a bunch of new things to it, and um, new pickups, a new pre-wire from Primal Tone. It's a seven-way, which uh, I'll explain as we do it. It's kind of cool, kind of a David Gilmore type of setup. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is take the strings off. Okay, so we yank the strings off of here. Man, are they filthy. Now we're going to remove these nasty tuning machines. And uh, eventually, when I'm finished with the headstock, they'll be replaced with uh, Fender branded ones that came off that player strat that, uh, that I demoed not too long ago. This fretboard is so filthy we're taking what I consider to be drastic measures, which is uh, using a scotch Brite pad on there. It, although it's not going to remove any material because it's an extra fine, you still want to run it with the grain once you get all the filth off. During this process, I use a product called Howard Feed and Wax. Uh, it just helps clean the fretboard and keep it moisturized. So once I'm done, I want to apply that again and simply wipe it off with a paper towel until no more comes off. You leave it sit for a couple minutes before that. And then it looks beautiful. Much different. At this point, we're just going to remove the pick guard and all of its contents as we're not using anything that's attached to it. Having removed the neck, now I'm going to clean up the body as best I can so not to get this filth all over me when I'm trying to do all the other things I need to do. Um, the cavity shielded pretty nicely. It's They're using a uh, a paint. I prefer the copper shielding myself, but this will do. We are going to use noiseless pickups, but even when you're using noiseless pickups, the cavity should be shielded. We are going to use three single coils. So the boss and I have had a lengthy conversation over the pick guard color. We have come to the agreement that this white perloid is probably the best choice. I do agree. It, uh, it is going to make it pop when it's all said and done. So the first thing we're going to need to do is install the pickups. We have two generation ones. Um, these, these are the screws that it, they came with. That's why I'm using all the hardware that they came with. They, they came with springs where the Gen 4 came with some sort of surgical tubing. And uh, back in the day, they used to do that as well. They use actual surgical tubing um, to to kind of create the <laughs> the spring effect that you need to, to adjust the pickup on the pick guard. So we'll get these installed. These need your pickups need to be in first before you do anything with the pre wire. Otherwise, it's going to be a real pain in the neck. So here's our surgical tubing, and we'll start that. The This Gen 4 came out of another guitar, so the wires are a little bit shorter than I want them to be, but uh, they should work out fine. This is a good time to remove the plastic wrap off the pick guard. It's kind of a pain in the neck after the strings are on, and honestly, if you're careful, you're not going to scratch it up anyway. All right, here we go. This is our Primal Tone seven-way pre-wire for Stratocasters. 
you can use this with a humbucker as well. Um, it, it'll work the same. It'll sound different, obviously. Uh, but I use all good materials. Um, you got a Switchcraft jack. I use all cloth wiring just to give it that vintage look. Uh, it's an Oaks Grigsby uh, five-way switch. Two CTS pots, orange drop capacitor, and the push pull is a Burns. I just I happen to like those. I like working with those better with the push pulls. They're a little easier with the soldering. Um, CTS seems to have uh, kind of overcomplicated the process in my opinion. I mean, not that they're bad. I'm sure there's people that love them. I'm just not one of them. I do, I do, however, like their pots a little better. They, there's something about them. They just seem kind of nice. So you want to just take this all off and then, um, you know, be careful not to tear it apart. You want to keep your wiring nice and neat it will line up with those holes without moving anything. So you just push it in. So when we cut our wires to size, we want to make sure that we leave enough to where we can move them around and not have to add wire to them um, if a situation arises that we're not thinking about. So this one right here is the neck pickup that we're soldering in. The middle pickups in already and uh, next and these are the hot leads obviously for them the, the, the black wires are going to go to any ground so on the gen 4 you'll notice there's three wires um, the reason for that is it because it, my understanding is that it's kind of wound much like a humbucker a stacked humbucker um, Amazingly though, it doesn't sound like a humbucker at all. They've done a really nice job making those sound like, like, you know, true single coils. Without, I can't say without noise, but with much less noise. And I, I think that's, you know, every generation, I think that's the thing they improve upon. So, as you can see, this red wire is a little shorter than I want it to be. It's going to be fine. That's only because it was hooked up to an S1 switch initially, which would have put it right where that push-pull pot is. So, anyway, the red is going to go to that lug. I'm just trying to get it to sit properly so when I solder it, it's not all messy. Um, the black and the green will go to any ground. Um, you'll notice uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of grounding going on. And, and that's very important to, uh, to make sure that you don't get any excessive noise. Um, you want to control that as best as possible. So the black wire on that pickup's a little short, so what we're going to do is solder that to the push-pull pot. The other ones are all going to go to the, to the first tone pot. So I, I do believe that's going to be our best bet. So we are going to solder in all of our ground connections at this point. As I said before, that extra green wire, um, that's considered a ground as well. So we'll just solder all these in, nice and neat. There's that short one. And then we'll roll into uh, connecting it to the guitar after we neaten things up a little bit. So when your connections are all correct, um, you want to use some zip ties, cut them nice, uh, keep everything to where it's nice and tight so it doesn't look like a four-year-old uh, <laughs> did the wiring on your guitar. Uh, nothing, well, there's worse things, but when you look inside a guitar and it just, all the wires are like a rat's nest, I mean, it really, it doesn't appear as though anyone took any care to do that. Or maybe they weren't quite clear on, you know, how to do it. So, anyway, uh, 
I would suggest just keeping things as neat and as tight as possible and if something ever does get disconnected it's a lot easier to see what's disconnected so that looks really neat the next thing we want to do is install our jack into our jack plate just so it's ready to roll when we start to do our final solder connections you want to make that uh, pretty tight so it doesn't come loose on you one thing I like to do is test fit the jack plate by plugging in a quarter inch cable just to make sure you'll be able to see that your screw holes line up properly with that plugged in then you're good to go okay so the next step is to feed our wires through so you want to feed the wires through to the spring claw you also want to feed your wires through for your jack um, in this case they were using real thin wire they weren't using uh, you know the cloth wiring like I'm using right now so the holes a little tight um, it'll work out though we'll get that through there in a second there we go now we pull those through and make sure everything's out of the way now we can start thinking about screwing down our pick guard and continuing <laughs> with the rest of the assembly of this guitar So it's important to see that you have where the tip comes in contact and the sleeve. All right, the sleeve is the ground wire and the tip, you'll see if you follow that around, that is connected directly to the lug you're going to solder the yellow wire onto. And then you repeat the process with the ground on the other lug. Now you push those wires out of the way because you don't want to disconnect them when you plug in your guitar. Just make sure you're clear and then you're good to go you screw it in BAM double check now we're going to uh, wire the we're going to solder the ground onto the spring claw we are now going to remove all of the old saddles to be replaced by some graph tech um, saddles just for the lubrication properties not to mention uh, these are kind of that Chinese pot metal stuff which uh, um, I don't think does a whole lot for your tone so we'll get these out of here and then we'll clean up the, uh, the bridge plate really well make it shiny and uh, start installing our new saddles so we just want to start all of our bridge screws by hand before tightening I, I have the clutch set real light I just want to run these in and not spend all day doing it. So you want to make sure you don't run them all the way down as well. So now we'll attach our tremolo springs. So sometimes you can attach them by hand. Other times you might need uh, some sort of hook or a pair of pliers or something like that to get them on. Um, it all depends. Um, so far lucky I lucky on the first two anyway and then uh, this one's a little tighter here so just need a little bit of assistance but there we go it's on as you can see our neck is shown back up rebranded and getting a new set of shoes these uh, tuning machines are off a of Mexican Stratocaster which are interchangeable with the Americans however on a Squire, the um, the anti-rotation pins are um, uh, slightly in a slightly different location. So I had to drill, I had to re-drill some holes on the drill press on the back to get these to work. But uh, um, they're all hidden under those tuning machines. All right, now we're going to bolt up our 21 fret neck. I was able to find a plate with the Fender F on the back of it so we don't have to reuse the Squire one. Um, we just want to start these before running them in as we do with all of our stuff. So you just run these in tight, not super tight, just snug. 
This way the neck is uh, sitting flat on the surface. You may need to use a shim, uh, maybe not. So we're going to string this up and then uh, do a complete setup. We'll do the intonation, we'll do all that stuff. So right now we're just running the strings in. You can see how that works. So it's always a good idea to use some sort of lubrication on the nut. Uh, the less friction the better, especially when there's a tremolo involved. So when winding up your strings, uh, you don't want to be too excessive with the number of winds on your pegs. Um, the more winds, the more likelihood you have of going out of tune, especially when you bend your note or use your tremolo. Um, you definitely want a couple because that's what's holding it in there. Um, unlike the locking tuners where you don't need, you know, you pull it, you pull it tight and then turn it probably uh, 90 degrees and it's probably close to in tune. That is not the case uh, with normal tuning or normal tuning pegs. So there you have it. Now we're going to set our string heights tune it up and set our intonation. All this kind of happens at the same time. You work them all together. Um, you know, even though you have a nine and a half inch radius on the fretboard, that doesn't necessarily translate to the bridge exactly the same because the spacing uh, gets wider as you go to the bridge. It's, it's slight, but it's not, um, it's not exactly the same. So essentially what I do is, is I try to I adjust each string individually. Basically if your frets are, are pretty leveled out and all that kind of thing, it's going to work itself out. Like your, your spacing from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string without a buzz, as long as it's the same across there, it should be pretty decent. Uh, you know, it, basically go for the feel instead of the, you know, the radius gauge at your bridge. It's very difficult to accurately hold that under there anyway. And as we spoke about in intonation simplified, that video, um, it's simply like this. Once your guitar is in tune, when you press down on the 12th fret, if it's sharp, when it was in tune with the open string, sharp you adjust the saddle away from the nut. Flat, you adjust the saddle toward the nut. It's, it's that simple. So you just have to remind yourself that because it, it does go against the grain. But there it is. All right, so now we're going to demonstrate this guitar all finished. You saw the process. It was kind of an arduous task, but it's now done plays really nicely, holds tune well, and it's got one of my cool pre-wires in it. It's a seven-way pre-wire, and the way that works is with this, this down, see it's a, got a push-pull on it. Okay, so with this down, your all the way up position is your neck, the next is your, your neck and your middle, then just your middle, then your middle and your bridge, and then your bridge, which is totally normal. So when you pull it up, now you've got other combinations that wouldn't normally be possible. So you've got your, your bridge and your neck together, and then one up is all three, and then it, then it, it winds up being the same after that. But you have two, two additional tonal possibilities, which is kind of cool. So uh, especially with that one all the way down with it up, with the with the bridge in the neck, it kind of gives it a telly flavor, which is kind of cool to have when you're playing a strat. So here's here's kind of what it sounds like. This is a generation one noiseless, these two, and the bridge is a generation four. Um, they're just what I had laying around. Um, I didn't want to spend any money on the upgrade for this guitar since it's, you know, it's a gift. So anyway, here's the, the neck position. So here's the the neck in the middle. 
It's got kind of a nice sound to it. Here's just the middle. Here's the <laughs> here's the middle and the bridge. Okay, so here's just the bridge. Now here's the bridge and the neck. So here is all three. So as you can see, there's a lot going on there, a lot of different things. So you get you get a lot of variety in sound. Now that was just clean, pretty much just a clean amp, just a generic amp that I have in, uh, what is it? Uh, bias effects too. I hope you liked the demonstration and uh, the content that uh, came before it. So if you have any kind of content that you would like to see, please list it in the comment section and uh, I'll do my best to make that happen for you. Um, other than that, please like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.